Morning church, morning YouTube, as always, saying every Sunday, good to be in God's house. Why? Because there's no place I'd rather be. Yes, I like to go out for breakfast. Yes, I like to do all those things. But most importantly, I like to be fed the word of God. And that's what we're called to do. And that's what we're here for today. So I'm thankful you came out today. And those that you that, that tune in today as well. Last week, we learned the importance of sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is so important. The significance of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Sound doctrine talks us about, you know, what, what Jesus did for us upon the cross. You know, doctrine of what he did. He, he paid for our sins upon the cross. Forgiveness. The blood paved the way. Three days later, he rises to beat death, so on and so forth. Resurrection, which is so important we understand. He did it to give all mankind, all mankind opportunity for salvation and eternal life. Those that knew the Lord did get together to learn God's word. That's why we're here. That's why it's so important. We come out Sunday, we come out Tuesday, and we grow. We grow in the word. A lot of people don't want to do that to say, well, I can do it from home. You can, but it's not the same. We, we exhort, we build each other up, and we build each other up in the word and love. Okay, let's go to Acts 2, 36 to 42. We already read this last week, but I want to use it to set the tone for the rest of this message. Acts 2, 36, 42 reads, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both the Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And that many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation that they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them 3,000 souls. Now here's what we want to continue with. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. When I grew up as a child, I didn't have a choice to go to church, like a lot of children now do. I didn't have a choice. I was told to go, but I went begrudgingly. And I could not wait until the service was over so I can go and play and do whatever I wanted on my own. Why is that so significant? Because we go to, we go to church not because we have to. We go because we want to. We never go to please someone else. We never go so someone else says, Oh, he made it again this week, you know, whatever it may be. And that's not what we do. We do it because we want to grow in the Lord. We want to grow in the word and understand the significance of what God has for us and grow in fellowship with Christ and other believers. So important. So why are we called the fellowship? And who are we called the fellowship with? First, we have to understand what fellowship really represents. Friendly association, especially with the people who share one's interest. One's interest. They value fun and good fellowship as the men of community. Now, of course, our fellowship would be that our common interest is we all have Jesus Christ. That's important. So, but before we talk about fellowship, that people associate fellowship, you know, after a service, you might have a nice meal, or you walk together with other brothers and sisters of Christ, and we fellowship, so on and so forth. We have to understand the significance of fellowship with Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 2 to 9. Now listen to this. 1 Corinthians 2, 1, 2 to 9 reads, Unto the church of God, which is Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and the peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. 
that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you may come behind in no gift waiting for the Lord of Jesus of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm unto you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you are called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the scripture sets the tone for the church and what it's all about, that one must believe, one must trust, one must confess and know in their heart that they have Jesus Christ in their life. We read in those that know Christ are sanctified, preached on sanctification. What does that mean? We're set apart, we're set aside. We're set aside not only from the world, but from ourselves. Why do we have to be set aside from ourselves? Because our self continues to fight. The flesh and the spirit will continue to fight until the day we go to be with the Lord, okay? We're also set aside for and through Jesus Christ. We are made holy, not on anything we could do. A lot of people say, well, he's holier than, than them or whatever. No, we're not. We're only holy by what Jesus Christ has done through us. We are set apart for a new life, a new way of living for the purpose of Christ and what the expe expectation of God is for his children. A lot of people say they know of God, but they, but they don't know him because they're not trusting what he has given us by the way of his son, Jesus Christ. All right. Verse 4 said, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. All right, grace. So important that we really have this cemented in our walk. Real simple, God's grace, which we know is unmerited favor. There's nothing we can do to earn it, buy it, walk through steps of religion or tradition because it's freely given by God. God. Nothing anyone can do because God has given it. And how did he give it? He gave it through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. He gave it to all mankind. He gives the gift of grace to all mankind for those that are willing to accept the offering. Okay. Just to cement it, Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. For by grace are you saved through faith. You hear that? The word of God gives us all the answers we need to understand. For by grace are you saved through faith. Yes. And not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are not his work, workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, I just had to add this today. I didn't put this in my message till about 730 this morning. This, that scripture I just read, Ephesians 2, listen to this. It takes away the power and authority of religion. What do I mean by that? Because it tells we are not saved from our religion or tradition, but only by the grace of God through Jesus Christ. It clears a lot of things up. People think they have to do this, they have to do that. I have to do this 100 steps in order to be have an opportunity for heaven or salvation or eternal life. It's, it's not the truth. The word of God tells us the truth. By grace, we are saved. And what is it? It's a gift of God. Yet man must be willing to accept what God through Christ provides in the way of salvation. Today, this is so important. I don't do this for, I do this for, I send this out to many people and it's on YouTube, whatever it means, wherever it goes. Today, do you know you're saved or hope you're saved? You know. What's the difference? Because if you hope you're saved, then you're not. Why do I mean this? It's so important. Because we need to trust, confess, and have faith to believe in what Jesus Christ did. There's no hopes, there's no second chances, there's no maybe so on and so forth. I tell it about it all the time. But we know, we have the hope. And what does that do? That gives us hope. When we trust and know the Lord, it gives us the promise of assurance of 
eternal life. Okay, verse 6. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. The only way the testimony which states that on our behalf, Christ has given all the right to be right with God the Father. That nothing we did, there's nothing I did, there's nothing I can accomplish on my own to be made right with God the Father because Christ did it all for me. Okay, listen to this. A strong, I didn't write this, this little blip here. It's another author. A strong testimony gives peace, comfort, and assurance. It generates the conviction that as the teachings of the Savior are consistently obeyed, life will be beautiful, the future secure, and there will be the capacity to overcome the challenges that cross our path. We prayed about it earlier. We all will have challenges in life. It's, it's part of life. People think once I give my life to Christ, everything's going to be, you know, wonderful and, you know, simple and smooth. No, it doesn't. He just promises that he will get us through those difficult times. The assurance of our salvation through the sealing of the Holy Spirit leads to be confident in Christ in all things. Are you confident in Christ in all things? We don't worry about the future. I don't worry who's going to be president. Do I want one over the other? Absolutely. But if it happens either way, do I really worry? I don't. Because worry shows that I have not strong faith as I'm called to have. Our eternity because we have assurance of only what Christ has given us. Too many in churches all over the world have no assurance for the simple reason. They don't know Christ. And without Christ, we have no peace. Verse 8 read, who shall confirm you unto the end? Now listen to this. That ye, that ye, who's ye? We may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. To confirm is to establish, to strengthen, to make firm. Again, we know that we will never be sin-free perfect. No one will be. You know, I, I think about that as we wrestle throughout life. You know, we're going to continue Satan's going to continue to come in our, in our path and try to take us off the path that God has laid before us. That's why it's so important we stay in the word, we stay in prayer, we stay in fellowship, so on and so forth. Okay. But I must be clear, listen to this. We wrestle, we will never be sin-free perfect. Now I put this in there and it's a little interesting. As we wrestle with the flesh and the spirit within. But I must be clear, this is important. Paul talked about this. This does never give us the right to willingly sin. It's so important you understand that because I know God will always forgive us, but if we continue to willingly do it, then where's the forgiveness? We don't really have it. So a lot of people think, and as Paul talked about it, does that give you then the, the, the license to sin? God forbid, no, it doesn't. All right. But we shall not fear his return, but welcome it. There's going to be people, I'm here to tell you, a lot that are going to fear the return of the Lord. We should not worry what happens in this life because we are in Christ and we are given the promise of eternal life. Verse 9 said, God is faithful by whom you are called unto the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ. So now we're going to talk. We're going to, we're going to peel everything away. We, we did the beginning. Now we're going to talk about what it is to have fellowship with Jesus Christ. The term here, there's many terms for this. Now I'm going to break it down a little bit. I'm going to get into the, the Greek context and all that, which is really cool. The term here means a union or a communion. The church of Corinth was brought into a union with Jesus Christ. All believers are brought, when they believe and trust the Lord, they are brought into a union with him. All right. The word says God is faithful. And the difference between God being faithful and man is God will always be faithful and man will always not be faithful. That's the truth. Even some believers at time are not faithful, but God remains faithful. Call unto fellowship unto Jesus Christ. That is the connection between us and him. Fellowship in the Greek word means koinonia. Say that one real fast can mean contribution, communion, and fellowship. Romans 15, 26 says, I'm just going to put it, give you a little scripture to show how it, the context means. 
Romans 15, 26 says, For it has pleased them in Macedonia and Achaia that they make certain contribution to the poor saints which are in Jerusalem. So the church supported the saints that were out there preaching a word and helping the saints, meaning not some we erect a statue of. The saints, meaning anyone that knows the Lord as their Savior, we become a saint. All right. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 reads, The cup of the blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread in which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Koinonia can also mean communion, which we have, will have today. We do it in a beautiful remembrance of what Jesus Christ had done for us upon the cross. Okay, 1 Corinthians 10, 14 to 18 reads, listen to this. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to the wise men, judge ye that which I say. The cup of the blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread, being Jesus Christ. It said he was the, the, the giver of life, the bread of life, so on and so forth. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are they not eating the sacrifices, partaking partakers of the altar? Paul is telling the church of Corinth, you must have fellowship in Christ and know him as your beloved savior. There's no way around it. We cannot commune to idols or false gods and claim we have fellowship with the Lord. A lot of people say, yeah, I know of God and, and I, I, I trust him so and so forth, but they may fellowship to the wrong God, small g. Too many want the benefits of knowing Christ but don't want to be in close fellowship with him because it calls us, here's where a lot of people lose and don't want to deal with it, calls us to surrender. What does it mean to surrender? That means you're giving your authority and power over to someone else. I gave, when I gave my life to Christ, I surrendered to Christ and obedience to him and no longer living for the things of our past. Matthew 26, 26 to 28 reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took up the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye, drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of my New Testament and shed for many remissions of sins. The beauty of communion, because it has such a significance, it goes back to remember what Christ did for us. Gave up his body, beaten, broken for us. The blood upon the cross for all to have the opportunity. First for forgiveness, then for salvation. Communion, the opportunity for fellowship. When we commune, we fellowship not amongst each other. We're a body. It says one body. What is one body? One body that first believes in Jesus Christ as their personal savior. One body being which represents the true church. We're just a little smidget of the true church that is out there. Anyone that confesses and believes upon Jesus Christ. All right. But we want to use the word fellowship to describe a partnership. This is good stuff. A partnership, not with anyone, but Jesus Christ. What is a partnership? Well, we can have a partnership in a business that we put our resources together and form a company. Many times the business partnership, as long as it does well, it's usually pretty well. But if it does poor, soon the business will dissolve. Go bankrupt or even prefer. Now let's switch it up a little bit. We have a, a holy, loving partnership in holy matrimony. That we are a separate person. When I'm married, I was a, I'm a separate person. My wife is a separate person. But we get together in a union through God, through a covenant, we become one. It's a beautiful thing. But yet, we see how many times people go their own way. They perhaps don't have the Lord in their life and something comes up. And that partnership soon dissolves. It happens. 
But unlike any other partnership, when we have one with Jesus Christ, the partnership we didn't buy into like a partnership with, uh, you know, whatever we're buying into with another person. Maybe we didn't have the finances or the know-how. So we, we bring the finances, someone else brings the know-how. We create a partnership. Is that what I'm talking about? We're talking about a partnership with the one and only Jesus Christ, that we have fellowship with him. How does one become a partner with Jesus Christ? I've been telling you, it's so important. We trust him. We confess and believe, and we have faith. You know how many people struggle for faith? They say, I can't, but it's without faith, it's impossible to please God. So what does that mean? If you don't have faith to believe in what God has given us by Jesus Christ, then it's impossible to have the promise of insurance of salvation. Okay. Let's go down a little bit. Let's go to John 17, 1 to 6. John 17, 1 to 6. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And thou hast given him the power over flesh, that he should give eternal. Listen to this. This is the word of God. It tells you who has the power over our lives to give us eternity. All right. And thou hast given him the power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And I have glorified thee in the earth, and I have finished the work which thou hast gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, and with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. And I have manifested thy name unto men, which thou hast gavest me of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and I have kept thy word. We can only have fellowship with God the Father when we have fellowship with Jesus Christ. It's impossible to have a partnership with one and not the other. Do you understand where I'm going? It's pretty simple. But a lot of people, they believe in God. And we were talking about earlier. People believe in God. You know, and as the word says, even if demons believe in the word of God and tremble, but yet they didn't have a relationship or partnership with Jesus Christ. All right. The only way to have fellowship with both is to trust what God's grace has provided. The love and mercy that he gives to us and the promise he gives us for us confessing and believing upon his only begotten son. This fellowship is like no other. The business is based on, a, a worldly business is based on trustworthiness. Now you see many businesses that dissolved because one of the partners went into the cookie jar one too many times and was taking money without the other partner knowing, and soon it would dissolve. And we talked earlier, a lot of times, if the trust between a man and a woman married, if that trust is fractured or broken, many times that matrimony, that holy married you know, covenant that we once professed might be broken, okay? When we have fellowship with Jesus Christ, we know that he made it possible for what he did. And once we understand what he did through the word, through the spirit, confess and believe in what he did, we have, this is, this is the most, I want you to really remember this. We have a partnership that is unbreakable. Unlike any other partnership. It's something that no man can break apart. And that is the truth. The unique thing about this relationship or partnership is that we rely upon him for all things, not ourselves. Too many times we rely on ourselves and soon what gets what happens, we get ourselves in trouble. Unlike the business partnership and even a marriage partnership, Jesus wants to be part of everything in our life. And then he calls us to be everything of who we are called to be in him. And as I mentioned earlier, it develops. The more we spend time in the Word, the more we spend time with Him, the more we spend time in fellowship with Him and in prayer and alone time and fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ, the stronger the faith, the partnership and the fellowship becomes. It becomes unshakable. And only that 
Not, it's never will break because God has put it together. Amazing things Jesus did so much for us. Why wouldn't we want to do so much for him? I ask that question a lot of people. Well, you know, it's a choice. It's called free will. He gave us life now and forever. That is the promise. Not because we are good men and women. Never good enough. There is no one in this world that is good enough without accepting Jesus Christ. Not because we're religious men or women. Not because, you know, we may have tried or done something else. But we desire to trust and have faith to believe in what Jesus Christ has done. Sadly, many will never develop the partnership because they will fail to confess and believe what Jesus Christ has done for them. Jesus Christ gives us the best partnership ever because when we are weak, he is strong. When we struggle, he is strong. When we face our most difficult trials of life, he and like our business partner and even sometimes our marriage partner will never give up on us. Jesus will say, come to me, rely upon me. And I will get you through all things. You know, as I use many times, you know, Psalm 23, you know, the, as, you, as you walk through the valley of shadow death, I used it so many times. People think that's where you're left. No, he promises to walk by our side. That his staff and his rock will comfort us and get us through that valley and help us have victory over that valley. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 58, you've heard this. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We have fellowship with him each day. It's not just a Sunday thing or a Tuesday thing or a Wednesday thing or whatever thing. It's supposed to be in everything, all right? Amen? Amen. We, are a, we are building on the partnership, wanting to be more like the partner. He don't want to be like us. We're called to be like him. As I always tell you, the only good in me, Pastor Tim, is what Christ is all in me. Amen? Amen. We grow in him through obedience. We grow in him through the word of God. We grow in him because we are called to, but because we want to. 1 John 1, 1 to 7 reads, that which we heard, let's, no, let me start over. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, jumped ahead a little bit, which we have seen with our eyes and which we have looked upon in our hands, have handled, I love us, have handled of the word of life. For if this life was manifested, we have seen it, and we bear witness and show unto us that eternal life, which that was with the Father is manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that we also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things I write unto you, that your joy may be full. That then this is the message you have heard of him and declare it to you that God is the light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not know the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let's tie it together. Fellowship with Jesus Christ first. We understand that God's word, as it said there, I love it says they handle. A pastor's called to handle the word of God or the word of life. This is what gives us life is the word of God. Jesus Christ, of course, but the word of God is what shows us how to be obedient, how to walk, how to have strength, when we need strength, how to be confident, so on and so forth. It's a beautiful thing. And they were handling the word of God. It's beautiful. Not until the word and the Holy Spirit work together can an unsaved man or woman, they will become to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It don't happen by magic. It don't happen by any other way. It happens by hearing the word of God. It, it happens by 
the Holy Spirit opening your heart, maybe through people sharing with you, maybe it's a track, maybe you see something on TV that Charles Stanley or Dr. Jeremiah or someone else may have brought forth and we grow and we start getting prepared and then something happens in the moment. Our heart finally opens and we start seeing what Jesus Christ has truly given us. And then we confess and believe in him as our personal savior. It's such a beautiful thing. Nothing is more beautiful, nothing. Yes, I love to see a, a, a baby just born or a, you know, as we talk a newborn father, whatever it is, but nothing is more beautiful than when a man or woman goes from the dark to the light, from death to life. True believers love fellowship with other believers because they love and build each other up, exhort. As we know, iron sharpens iron. Our fellowship is with God through our fellowship we have with Christ. And the most incredible thing anyone can ever give us is because when we believe upon Jesus Christ, prior to that, we didn't have access to God the Father. We were no different than anyone else. But once we believe in Jesus Christ, we have direct access to God the Father. I don't understand how people can't see that significance. We don't go to anyone else. We go to God the Father. Amen. God will never be in the presence of darkness. We claim we love God and we trust the Lord as our Savior. We continue to live a sinful life. Pretty simple. And we're not walking in the light of Christ. And we have no fellowship with him. We know that we will never, listen to this, we know that we'll never have the walk of Christ. But we seek to grow with him, leaving our past sins and our ways of sin behind us and giving him the th into our thoughts and allowing him to continue to purify us, to make us perfect. As we know, gold, the purest gold has to be refined numerous, numerous, numerous times. And then you get all the impurities out. And that's what God, and through the word and through Jesus Christ and through the conviction the Holy Spirit will do. It keeps refining us, getting that Filth, that dirt, whatever you want to say. Okay. All right. We improve our fellowship by spending time in the Word. Do you spend time in the Word? Don't answer me. Do you spend, you got to answer these questions. You don't have to read the whole book in a year. I'd rather have you read a half a chapter and get more out of it each day than try to read 10 chapters. Read a, a verse, and if that verse means so much and you want to dig down and, and go through it and dissect it, that's beautiful. That's how you grow. Desire obedience, not out of guilt or demand, out of love for Christ. We surrender to God's will in everything, in everything. Remember this. He has control over your life, whether you believe or not. In an instant, we can lose everything. Everything. That means you can lose your house, your wife, your wife, your wife. You can lose anything, but yet God wants the best for his children. All right. We surrender to God's will and everything and his will for lives and watch of what we desire. So it's in God's will and not our will. We love God above all. That means above your spouse. Amen. That means above your kids. Amen. That means above your, your kid or your puppy. That means everything. That means above money, all right? A lot Amen. of people struggle. We put them above all. We love and put, and we just love what God gives us. So I'm going to give you, uh, I did some acronyms out of fellowship, and I will close with this. Fellowship, F, free. We are we come once our sinful past are, are no longer. Everything, which is E, we do in a life is for Christ. L, let Christ rule your heart. L, love him more each day. Do you love him more each day? We should, as we draw closer, as we build that fellowship. Oh, only you can desire fellowship with him. No one can do it for you. Just like I can't, I can't do any, I can't believe for someone else to give them salvation. We are required to do it for ourselves. W, we win at life when we love Christ. S, sin becomes less a snare when we increase our fellowship. I'm here to tell you, the more you're in the word, the more you come out, whether it's Sundays, Tuesdays, whatever, the more you pray, 
The more you feed the spirit to good things of, of the Lord and less of the world, it's real simple. The less sin will have an opportunity to snare your heart. Eight, how wonderful it is to spend time with the king. I, I'm the only one responsible for my own salvation and fellowship with him. P, perfection in Christ is what comes with fellowship with him. Today, how's your time in fellowship with the Savior? Is it joyous? Is it sweet? Is it wonderful like fellowship should be? Or is it strained? People that have a strained relationship or fellowship sometimes may have a sin that's not confessed or something else they're struggling with. But are you growing through him? And are you feeding the spirit, the word, the word and enjoy quiet time with him? Let's close in prayer for a minute. Dear loving Father, come before you. We just thank you what the word brings us. We thank you that we have fellowship with you for, by what you have given us, a fellowship that is strong, a fellowship that you will just continue to build if we desire it, Lord. But Lord, we love you, and I thank you for those here today. I pray that the message may have touched something in their life to grow their fellowship with you. Nothing is more beautiful. If someone here, someone watching, someone reading, don't have fellowship, don't know you, I pray today would be the day that they open their heart to you and confess and believe upon you, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. We love you. We thank you. Give you the glory in all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.